Come on, serious suggestions, please. I'm not trying to write a thriller here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? An essay! That means facts and logic. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? The Tatar is soon a mystery. When so much remains unexplained, there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, a mysterious person? I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Yes, you came to me. So all the more reason to take my advice. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. Uh, okay, but... Did one of them just mention Tatara Suna? But that's all the way in Imazuma! Is it just Paimon or is it kind of unusual for someone in Sumeru to want to write a paper about that? Everyone here is just going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Because people here are free to research pretty much anything. Great! Let's go find out what this Tatarasuna mystery is all about. Alright, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. Ugh, if only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about her, this seems like the kind of thing she'd know about. Oh, you're the traveler, you say? Hmm... Hey, what's with that face? Don't believe us? No, no. Of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit, I started... Uh... examining the evidence. Sorry. Arsawada, for the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. Uh, Traveler, I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah, uh, I see. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that, eh? Uh... If you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatarasuna. Uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, fair point. In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatarasuna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Apart from the swordmaker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, 
The records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger, someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatara Suna for a while before disappearing without a trace. And shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Hmm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! Stop shouting! This part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. It just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. Two missing people in the story now? That's right! What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Oh, the swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin Art and so on? Wow, yes, you really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So, basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin art. Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, you left out the biggest detail of all. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. Or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most. Get to the point, for Pete's sake. According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. A puppet? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. Uh... <laughs> uh... No! Paimon just meant... Uh... <laughs> how creepy! The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree. It does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look! Oh, and please read my essay draft as well.
Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but I think essays should be grounded in facts. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawana's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. Wait, you're allowed to just make stuff up? Pretty sure you've gone from essay to guessay there. Akaba, look. Your teacher has researched this extensively. I've reached out to everyone I could think of. Whatever information we have now is all that there is to know. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Ugh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Give me some time. I need to find a new angle on this. We have some other stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay! Alright, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. Hey, so... that thing they were talking about... It has to do with the Balladeer, doesn't it? Okay, then, even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? After all, we kicked his butt and got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? If you ask Paimon, Akaba should just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in... Hey, did you see that? He literally just went by over there. It looked like... like... The Balladeer! No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see. Paimon, there you are. Nahida! Bad news. We just saw the balladeer strolling around in public. Did he escape or... Ah! It's him! Hmm. <laughs> sure enough. You're here. Hey! What are you doing in the sanctuary of Suristana? Aren't you supposed to be locked up? I know you must have a lot of questions. Please, allow me to explain. It was my idea to set the Balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's gonna do some investigation in Ermansoul for me. A deal? Huh. You sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumeru would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. But if that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was... Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. Mm, well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. 
just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you. Considering you even struck a deal with the doctor. Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. The Balladeer's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. Wait a second. Former? You mean, he's not a Harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but... It seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... Sometimes it's you using them, other times it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui. And also between each of the Harbingers. So as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events... Even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. <laughs> well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings, and you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear, don't you? And they're your friends. So I guess you'll be siding with them. Yeah, obviously! Nahira, don't listen to him! Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. Alright, then I'll do what we agreed. Good. Go now, and keep in touch. Nahira, are you... Are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. Yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin's soul. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Soul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information in Ermansoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermansoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information and should be able to find it more quickly. dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. And Traveler, I know what your heart desires most of all. Our minds have connected several times before. 
There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark, searching for the one candle whose light still burns. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm... Paimon's still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. <laughs> Seems like we have a telepathic connection. In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Soul from the outside. Great, thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Soul. It looks pretty different here compared to last time. The colors are gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh. But I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Shut your beak, Jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards. But right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. I need to be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. I know there are many grievances between you, on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. Fine, let's call it truce, but only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are gonna be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. If there are no further objections, I suggest we get going. Or did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? We can start now. Ermin Soul access grid. Initiating connection procedure. Is this a small sapling? Oh, darn it! Come on, let's catch up with him! Wow! So this is the inside of Ermensoul. 
Ooh, Paimon's never seen anything like this. And it feels like a sacred place. Ermin's soul is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. Why is it that Paimon just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Ermansoul. Can you still sense where the heart of Ermansoul is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. Stay close. Don't go running off. Hey, so... Say we did go running off in here. What would happen? <laughs> what, what are you smirking at? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is to stick close to me. Those are all packets of information from inside Ermansoul. Be careful not to touch them. in a place to lie, but this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? We're here. What a huge tree! Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. Are you ready? Ready when you are. Then please begin. Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The Balladeer is actually doing what Nahida tells him. Guess he must want to stay alive. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. Huh. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. Traveler, Paimon, would you like to talk? Yes, I've also invited Paimon to join. Huh? What the? We can talk to each other inside our heads? <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. Paimon's never tried this before. This is great! So, Paimon's been wanting to ask you something. Don't you think the Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction? He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. Well done. Smart and attentive as always. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Well, it's true. 
Betrayal turned the Paladir into the person he is today. Huh. Paima thought nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. Everyone has a history, Paimon. Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on, yes. I know about all of that. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. Oh? How interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. So the guess they got it right? Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatarasuna was sabotaged. Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. Uh, uh what makes you think we're talking to each other? <laughs> Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermensoul at all. About that. Didn't Nahida tell you? It's not like we've never met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Huh? Wait. This light, it looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Hey, don't you forget the agreement. You have to share it with us. Shh, just wait. Mr. Niwa, are you certain this is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara Suna's furnace after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the furnace. It has to be me. Is that so? <sighs> well, since you insist. <gasps> it's... I have been in Tatara Suna for some time now. You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Under your leadership, Tatara Suna is a warm, welcoming place, like a giant village. People are gainfully employed, their lives have purpose, they are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatara Suna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. The forging industry with Crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, others unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. 
You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Even now, you remain one of Tatarasuna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. <laughs> you flatter me. From the outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma. And it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So you say, Escher. But is this really the truth? My good sir, what do you mean? I tried to resist thinking it was all connected. Because I didn't want to speculate. And I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke? Mounting production problems? Worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still, I suspect you understand it better than I do. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with Shogun. This is our last hope. But that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? <sighs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. <sighs> Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio, the yokai struck down by the Shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. I'm in charge here, and I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside, probably to my death. But what about you? What are you still doing here? Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. Drop the act! We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatara Suna has worked. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? Don't you have all your answers by now? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. A moment like this, where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. <sighs> you... You... You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well, at least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias, and that I was not from Fontaine at all. And yet, Despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity, and what I seek in Tatarasuna. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? <clears throat> if you kill me, there's no one who can get inside the furnace. So you're really going to destroy this place? Is that it? Oh, but you're quite wrong. 
There is one other person. Um, some may not see him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. You're just missing a heart. <gasps> Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But... This makes no sense. What are you really trying to accomplish by all this? Why go to all this trouble? It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. I'm a Fatui Harbinger. Call me... The Doctor. The... Fatui? Who... What do you want? Just to create a minor inconvenience for your nation. That's it? That's why you... gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the Crystal Marrow? <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, even without you, that pure, innocent puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? <clears throat> If you give him my heart, tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. He has nothing to prove to anyone. Because not everyone just wants to use other people. The only ones who think like that are people like you. What a beautiful way to see the world. It almost makes me feel a little guilty. Hmm. Then out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. I say, Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa? Already dead. What a pity. <sighs> Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> what fun it was. I'd like to introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not... Let's turn him to dust. <laughs> hey, are you all right? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore!
Good. Good. Was that... the doctor? Did he turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? But why did we see things from his perspective? When I touched the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments, I read this memory in his mind. You have to admit, it must be the truth. Maybe so, but it means nothing. Does it? But this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you. He never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace. You know very well what that means. Even more so than I. Hmm. Let's give him some space. He looks really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. They need to give him some time to process his emotions. Paimon's still confused about the Tatarasuna incident. So, the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as the mechanic from Fontaine. And that's when the trouble began. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. Of all the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the Balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Niwa's heart into the device and handed it to the Balladeer. Then, he instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. The load was far beyond what he expected, but the Balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Niwa fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The balladeer was stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing, but it has protected him from the film. He thought Niwa had completely betrayed him, and yet... This very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the Balladeer threw the heart to the ground and left Tatarasuna without looking back. Holy moly! So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible! Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. Tatori, you brazen-faced... <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him! 